Welcome back to the Fine Watch Club media channel. It's Sam here, and today's video is a quick reminder of the ever-present counterfeit Rolex market. Buying from a respected dealer is of course the safer option when it comes to purchasing a luxury wristwatch. If you're flying a little more solo, then here's a video to support your journey through what can often be a bit of a jungle out there. Now, let's turn our attention to a discontinued Rolex GMT Master II Coke variant, reference 16710. We have two here, however one has an acute case of imposter syndrome. It would of course be wrong to assume that the counterfeit Rolex market is targeting the latest models only. Counterfeits from a more vintage era can look particularly appealing due to posing as new old stock. Before we get going, let's have a quick 10 question quiz, spot the phony, no pausing. The ever-evolving checklist when identifying a fake Rolex looks a little bit like this. The finish, the smooth motion of the hands, how does it sound, its weight and measurements, serial and model numbers, case back engravings, date window or cyclops where applicable, waterproofness, the micro etchings of the coronet, the consistency of the loom, and of course, the movement. The general finish to the naked eye, perhaps more applicable a decade ago, the general finish of the better fakes these days is of a much higher quality. As per the many others who have tackled this subject before, the standard of Rolex counterfeits can crudely be split into three or maybe five tiers. Super fakes, where you're spending close to a thousand bucks, in which case there are plenty of alternatives in that price range. These are sometimes referred to as Frankenstein watches. They may well have a Rolex movement from an older, less expensive model. And then at the other end of the spectrum are the ones you buy just outside your beach resort when you're on your holidays. And then there's everything in between. This one is definitely up there, but not quite the super fake category. So in the hand, it feels ever so slightly bigger than it should do. In terms of the finish, whilst a very high standard, the grain on the lugs looks a little suspicious. Now you probably need to have handled a number of Rolexes to identify this. The font of the numbers on the bezel are a little chubby, and this was the first of the red flags for me. Another check is the smooth motion of the hands. How does it sound? Does it go tick-tock? The weight? There's just the five grams in it between the two, not at all noticeable in the hand. The measurements? Well, the fake GMT has a one millimetre thicker case and measures 0.4 of a millimetre longer when we measured the wingspan, the length of the lug. Whilst being tiny variables, when handling the extra mil does get you thinking, especially if you're handling side by side with a genuine article. Granted, this is a slightly earlier model. Serial and model numbers? Another thing to look out for, this one sports the MH32118 serial number. Now a quick Google of this number soon reveals some rather damning evidence. Just the third result down is a link to a Rolex forum highlighting this is a commonly used serial number on fake Rolexes. 
The bracelet on the 16710 should be a reference 78790. However, this fake has been engraved with reference 93250, which is commonly found on the Submariner bracelet. Now we check the case back engravings. The finish is a little iffy. The date window or Cyclops where applicable, not quite the two and a half times magnification, but we don't think. The finish of the numerals on the calendar wheel is often another more obvious tell. Sloppy and positioned off center. Now let's see back to back, one to 11, imitation versus the genuine article. The coronet on the crown is substandard for sure, and also on the bracelet. Got to check the consistency of the loom on the markers. The high standards of Rolex quality control just wouldn't allow this to reach the authorised dealers. Now these steps can of course be bypassed and the removal of the case back provides us with all the evidence we need. We're certainly not dealing with the quartz here and whilst the movement is automatic, it bears no resemblance to the Rolex Calibre 3185. Now it is understood that those involved in manufacturing of fake Rolexes have turned to the vintage or semi-vintage era, with newer models having additional unique identifiers. Another check is the waterproofness. To end the circulation of this particular counterfeit, we'd always plan to destroy it. Instead of taking a sledgehammer to it, let's add a quick science experiment to the video. Here we have a simple water pressure tester, with a bit of pumping, and a quick calculation to convert meters into bar of pressure, we can replicate depth. Talking of calculations, or perhaps complex algorithms, please could you consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel to support our future ventures. Now the Rolex 16710 is waterproof to a depth of 100 meters, or 330 feet. The rubber gaskets are a fairly generic, inexpensive part, so we're pretty interested to see how this performs. So let's see what happens when we pop this Moody in the water. So, we certainly didn't predict that, did you? We were expecting, and truth be told, hoping the Cyclops would crack, as would the glass, and consequently this fake would meet its end. We exhaustedly reached 10 bars of pressure, which is 145 psi, pounds per square inch. This equates to a depth of 101.9 meters, or 334 feet. It's certainly not an exact science, however, but the waterproof status of this watch exceeded Rolex's own depth recommendations for the GMT Master II. This raises more questions than it provides answers. We thought it may have a trip lock crown like a Submariner. However, this is a twin lock, as is a real GMT Master II. And as we know, it isn't sold as a diver's watch. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this one, so be sure to offer us any assistance in the comments section. To conclude, and as mentioned at the start of the video, a trusted dealer is the safer option when sourcing a luxury Swiss timepiece. Hopefully this video has offered a little insight into what's going on out there. With years of experience in the industry, trust us to separate the good from the bad and the downright ugly. And of course, thanks for spending a moment of time having a watch of this video. Don't you know, 